Hello Internet, I am Sarandalot and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, how to use and how to kind of work your way around this shader that I set up and that I did a showcase for recently. I call it kind of a super shader because it encompasses uh, quite a few things inside of it. Uh, originally I was going to show how to make it, but if I just take a little trip inside here, and then inside here, and then inside here, and, well, you can see that things quickly get out of hand. So, I decided not to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you generally how it works and how you can use it. I'm also going to provide you with a download link to this blend file here, where we have a little setup scene uh, with an environment so uh, that you can play along at home and kind of see how things work out yourself. So when you open up the file, you're going to see this basically, where you have uh, the main empty material, and I also have an, a test material that I did using a texture from uh, this website, Seamless Pixels at blogspot.ca, uh, which is an amazing website for free textures. Well, free if you want lower quality versions. You can buy all of them for 10 bucks. And the, they're all tileable. It's absolutely incredible the, the amount of work that this guy has put into them. So, without further ado, I'll show you your way around this shader. So basically, the way this works is uh, it works on the principle of Fresnel reflection, which is the phenomenon, simply put, that when you're looking at an object kind of at a, uh, at a really shallow angle, it's going to appear to reflect more uh, perfectly, I suppose, than if you're looking at it on a uh, kind of a straight-on angle. So we can see that happening here right off the bat if I just uh, load up, oops, if I just load, load up this one area. Uh, show you this. There we go. So we have a plain white material, but you can see that if we're looking at it straight on, we don't really get that many reflections, and if you're looking at it on the side, you get kind of more reflections, and unintentionally, this creates a bit of a realistic effect. I got this, I learned how to do this um, from a tutorial, and I modified it kind of myself to suit my needs. I'll link to the tutorial in the description so you can follow along with that if you want. Basically the way my super shader thing works is that you have, uh, you can have a non-metallic base or a metallic base, and then on top of either one of those, you can have a, a coating. And then on top of, or along with that, you can also have some sort of volume in it, just for added the flexibility. So let's start going through what each of these does. The, I'm going to make a uh, smaller square here, just so that, go back up to this corner. There we go. Alright, so the Fresnel power basically controls um, the amount or the the intensity of that side uh, angle reflection amount. You can set it between 4 and 6. If you set it between 4, you're going to see a lot more reflections earlier on and the gradient is going to be smoother. And if you set it all the way at 6, uh, the gradient is going to be sharper right towards the edges. It all depends on the look you're going for. I have it set default at 5 because that's a decently realistic looking curve judging from the mathematics of it. Uh, the base color is what you start off with. It's literally just the color of the base. You can change it to whatever you want. The roughness. Now, this changes the roughness of your entire base coat. So, if you have it set at zero, you're not going to have anything going on there. If you have it set at, like, one, well, you can see. This is basically what roughness does in, uh, in a normal shader. And you can set it all the way, start going up all the way, and you start getting this really smooth, soft, looking type thing. Uh, base minimum reflectivity. Now, you'll see, you, you already see here how um, when you're looking at it straight on, you don't get as much reflection as, you're, as if you're looking at it at the side, but you still get a little bit of reflection. That's what this base minimum reflectivity is. So I'd have a default set at 0 0.04, which is equivalent to like 4% out of 100, because that seems to be uh, according to some information I got from that tutorial video I watched, uh, a pretty average 
representation of the base reflectivity of objects, of course, you could set it to zero, so you have absolutely no reflections on the middle and reflections on the side. Uh, or you can set it higher, light at one, so you have entire reflections. Or It's a little bit unrealistic, but if you're going for a pure reflective surface like that, it's not that bad. You can set it somewhere in the middle, light at point two, so you have a more reflective plastic light looking surface. So use metallic. This should be set at either zero or one because it uh, basically bounces between using this node group or using this node group. And what it does is that instead of using a diffuse or diffuse surface as its base, it uses another glossy surface and the color alters between uh, the base color and the reflective color, perfect reflection, which is white on the edge. So if I go ahead and use metallic all the way there, we can see that we get this kind of metallic look and towards the edges, towards the borders, we have this uh, nice fading into white going on. Uh, let's use metallic. So, and then if we want to use refraction, for example, uh, again, either zero or one, anything else in between looks a little bit strange. So we have this reflect refraction and we have glass right now, kind of, and I'll zoom out a little bit to get a little bit of a better idea of how this is working. Now it looks a little bit strange because it's blue, so if you want like a plain, a realistic glass looking material, set it to not black, <laughs> set it to completely white, and there you've got glass. Simple as that really, and you still have the reflections on the edge. If you want more of like a, uh, a reflective coating instead of a refractive coating, turn up that minimum reflectivity to like point, uh, 0.05 maybe. Or, sorry, point 0.1 of that. So you have uh, more reflections, covers up some of those spots, makes it look ultimately a little bit more realistic. It actually looks like glass. And then you have, of course, the index of refraction right underneath it, which you can change to be whatever you want. Water is 1.33. Uh, something higher, like crystal, is like 2.3 or something like that, I think. So that's some pretty interesting looking stuff going on there. The default is 1.45, because that's what the default is in Blender. Now, while we're on the topic of refraction, I'll just jump down here over to volume. Now, you can change the volume color, for example. Uh, if you want it to look like the actual glass is covered, colored, sorry, instead of just having a coat. If you change this color, the base color, it looks like the coat, the, 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 uh, it, it was like, uh, painted on afterwards or something like that, which is cool. I mean, whatever, like, it's a material. It doesn't really matter what you want to do with it. But if you want to make it look like the actual glass is tinted a certain color, that's what you want to do down here. So change the volume color to like, I don't know, let's take that turquoise bright blue. And nothing happened because we have to set the volume density. So let's set it up to like one. There we go. So we're starting to get a little bit of color. And it doesn't look too different at this point, but that's because we can't see the difference in depth. So I'll go over here to the monkey. And now you'll be able to see quite a difference. So you see how now it actually looks like the glass has some sort of volume to it because you have the ear here, which is very thin, as well as the eyebrows, and they don't have much color, but then the thicker parts of it has a lot more color. So if we can bump the density up to like 2.5 now or something like that, the effect is amplified even more. So that's your, your volume. So usually I just set that to a white and then change the density to zero so it doesn't interfere with anything else. Now for the coding. This is a I'll stay down here the monkey. I'll just get rid of the user fraction. So we're back to our standard material now. Uh I'll just do the point zero four. There we go. Now what is this coat? Now it's a, it's a separate layer on top of the base uh uh, the base color, the base shaders here. So what we could do, for example, is make a metallic base shader. Uh, made it like, uh, I like blue. Let's do that. <laughs> Change the roughness to like 0.2 or something like that. Have a nice shiny, rough looking material. And then we're like, well, but it's rough and we want like nice reflections on top of that. So then we can use coat 0 or 1, put it all the way at 1. All right. So what did that do? We can see here on the edges that we're actually getting 
smooth reflections off of all of it. Go back up so you can see it better up here. There we go. So we have a rough metallic surface underneath, but we also have smooth, clear reflections on top. It gives a really nice effect as if it's varnished or, or coated or something, like car paint. Uh, you have this speckly stuff, which is just uh, an artifact right now, because I only have it at 10 samples, but you have this base color over here, so you can totally put like a, a car texture or a procedural uh, Voronoi texture or something like that in there, and it'll act just about the same way. So then you have the coat roughness and the coat minimum reflectivity, which are the work the exact same way as the base roughness and the base minimum reflectivity. So with all of this, um, you have the power to create some pretty cool uh, looking textures and materials if you if you have uh, some good textures at your disposal. So I did a test with this, and I'll just set all of these materials over to this texture test. What I did for this was that I took a texture that I found online. I liked it. it was like a rock texture type of thing. And I, I uh, hooked up two of these shaders, one for the bumps and one for the flat surfaces. Uh, separated them based on a normal bump map that I made myself just using Photoshop and adjusting the levels. I'll, I can link a good tutorial about that as well. It's by Andrew Price. Blended Guru stuff is always some of the best, in my opinion. So here we go. Using this shader, we have kind of a nice-looking stone uh, stone material. And we can tell that there's a difference in texture between the kind of the indents where it's supposed to be dirty and stuff and the actual outer layer, especially when it reacts on the edge with these nice uh, kind of lighting uh, effects here. So yeah, there we go. That's the uh, that's how to use this kind of super shader. It was fun to put together. Feel free to use it however you want. Mess around with the nodes, change it up a little bit, and uh, I'd like to see some stuff that people would be able to create with it. Cause I know I sure had a lot of fun doing it. So anyways, there you go. That's how to use it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.